Hi, my name is Diego, and uh, I should introduce him first. And I'm Kevin. Yeah, he's Kevin. I'm Diego. We work at Mozilla VR team, and we are focused on tools to make VR content creation easier. So um, I confess, I'm a web developer. Uh, <laughs> and um, Me too. I wanted to do VR, and I started to learn about um, texture mappings, geometries, uh, shaders, uh, GLSL, and I was a bit lost. And uh, uh, I wanted to do VR, because when you think about the possibilities, uh, I felt that I was the VR medium is so much larger than the rest. We believe that uh, we will consume any sort of media in a VR context in the future. And uh, if I stick with the 2D web, I'm going to be confined in this circle. And I'm going to be missing all this part here. So there's a necessity of, for web developers to learn new skills if we want to stay relevant in the future. So, and our goal is to help web developers to get on board on the new medium in a way that it makes sense for them. So we introduce concepts little by little, and you have a lot that you can latch on, a lot of concepts of patterns that you already know uh, that you can start using. Um, and this is, this is the reason for A-Frame, and uh, Kevin is gonna introduce okay. it. So, we released A-Frame, it's an open source web VR framework. We released it mid-December. And the reason we wanted to make it easier because when you want to create a web VR experience, there's just way too many things that you have to do. And there's way too much boilerplate involved. Um, for example, if you use 3GS, you have to go into the examples folder to find the VR effect, set up your cameras, set up your render loop, your lights. Um, build UI for entering VR, find the web VR polyfill. And this is a hard blocker for creating tiny bite-sized web VR experiences. Because if you think about the web, there's so many cool things like, does, do people still remember Zombocom? Oh, oh yeah. Like everything is possible. Everything is possible with Zombocom. <laughs> think if you wanted to create web VR experiences like that, tiny bite-sized ones, would you want to go through all this if you just wanted to create a tiny little kind of wacky app? Um, all this boilerplate, is just, it just kills motivation for, for wanting to build anything. And it's like kind of like the equivalent if you just want to make a sandwich, but you have to like bake your own bread first. So what, it, what A-Frame does is we provide you the bread. Um, so all that boilerplate is just handled with one line of HTML. It's a scene, and everything just works for you out of the box. And with that, uh, you fill your sandwich with ingredients. So we let you build 3D scenes with just HTML. It's declarative markup. And this is arguably the easiest language in computing. It's very accessible. Even kids can do it. So you can have a box and just pass attributes such as source, um, a OBJ model. Or you can have 360 images with just one line of HTML. But we thought that wasn't powerful enough. This kind of declarative markup has been done before in the past with uh, Tony. He's done, he's done VRML, and X, there's also been X3DOM. Um, so if we just stuck with this, it would kind of be like reinventing the wheel. Uh, we wanted developers to not be constrained in any way, and we wanted to have permissions permissionless innovation. So what we came up with was we wanted to borrow patterns from the 3D and game development industry. And we didn't want yeah, developers to be constrained in any way. So we created escape hatches for extensibility. And we did that through the any component system pattern. So this is a pattern that Unity uses. And the idea is that every object in the scene is an entity and you attach components to provide appearance, behavior, and functionality to those entities. And those entities by themselves, they don't do anything. So the analogy is that, say you had Minecraft and every block was an entity, and by itself it doesn't do anything, but you apply components such as physics to make the blocks fall, or you provide a hardness component to 
give the blocks a different hardness, how long it takes to break it, or maybe you provide the block with like a damaging point to, dam uh, to damage the, comp the, the player. So in practice, it looks like this in A-frame. You start with an entity tag, and by itself it doesn't do anything. And then you apply components. So what it looks like is component names are attribute names. So we have a geometry of material, and this is what creates a sphere. And then within those components, or those attributes, you pass like a CSS-like um, style syntax to uh, configure the component, so you can give it a shape of sphere and a radius, and you can give it a color. But you could do cooler things. Suppose I created my own component that generates entities within that object. So I give it a description of uh, the object, which is rain, and I want to create 100 of them. And that mix in would look like this, which is even more spheres and materials. And you can even give it behavior, so when the rain collides, it explodes and splatters, or you can give it random positions. So with all that, in HTML, you have rain within the sky. And we had, a, we had feedback from the community. They said, A-Frame is like when MVC landed in traditional web development. And it provides structure to 3GS, which is kind of like the analogy of uh, back then when web development, you just kind of had blobs of code that you had to hack up every single time. So in summary for A-Frame, it reduces a lot of boilerplate. It empowers developers and designers to build without having to uh, learn a lot of graphics or 3D knowledge. And it provides an entirely new realm of exploration and learning. So you have this whole new medium that you can go out and learn if you love learning. And um, it's very ergonomic to use, and it provides, a it provides structure to 3GS. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about community, what the community has done within the last six months. They create tons of really cool new scenes, and we've actually had some really great feedback. Uh, sometimes they say like this is like a gift because they couldn't wrap their heads around 3GS, but with A-Frame it makes it a lot easier to work with. And sometimes we even get maybe like drunk Slack messages like, oh, I love you guys, thanks for doing this, this is awesome. <laughs> And these are the standard components that we ship with A-Frame, like position or rotation, light or sound. And here's what the community has enabled. They create components to do anything, such as physics or uh, there's an engineer uh, at Google, Don McCurdy. He's been one of our biggest contributors. He's created tons of components to help out the community. So he's created components to hook up to gamepad devices. He's helped us create physics. He's created ocean components, and we've seen that been reused in the community a lot. Uh, I see scenes that uses his components. So what you have is you have developers empowering other developers, and then it kind of creates like a virtuous cycle. And you also notice that there's integration with such as React. Um, a couple people in the room has created components, uh, like Amber has created an AllSpace component to hook up with AllSpace. And we also have... Uh, yeah, integration works with Meteor and D3. And some numbers, we have 780 members on Slack. So that's more than the WebVR Slack by itself, and it's extremely active. We've been hyper-reactive in Respond community. When we launched the Slack channel, uh, we were getting tons of questions and messages, and we went on holiday right after we launched it. And we kind of had 24-7 coverage on response to asking questions because a lot of people went out and traveled abroad. So, And w my phone gets tons of pings like every second, and we just pretty much answer our questions immediately. We have 2,000 stars and 40 contributors on GitHub, and we feature everyone's projects that we can find on the A-Frame blog. So Total has been, that's a weekly blog on A-Frame IO. And we have featured 120 projects in total. And last week we featured 20, so this is definitely rising in momentum. We have 1,993 stars. 
So you can help us reach 2,000. Hint, hint. <laughs> And then we're going to show off some sneak peeks of features or experiments that we've been working on within the last month or so. One of which is Firebase integration for multi-user A-frame scenes. So if you go to the link at tiny.cc slash A-frame multi on your phone, what you'll see is that you can all see each other in a space very similar to this. And I can do it myself as well. So hopefully I'll see some people pop up. <coughs> One person. Hello. <laughs> oh, it's tiny.cc slash a frame dash multi. Got it. All right, you got two people. So everyone, if you click or tap your phones, you can kind of raise the roof while people are starting to pop in. So this was a like a huge revelation to me because I spent months just developing a frame scenes and they're all siloed. And then once I released this, I was nodding up and down with someone. I just felt like someone was in the room with me. So, <laughs> okay, tiny.cc slash a frame dash multi. And this is uh, Firebase powered. So we try something. If everyone on the like this side of the room starts uh, tapping the phone and we'll try to do a wave. This is very ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, stage, stage right, or everyone decide wherever you are. All right, one, two, three, tap your phones. All right, that didn't work. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's working, yeah, but not, not the coordinated wave, no. This is Google's Wi Fi latency. <laughs> All right, while you all play with that distracted, uh, Diego's going to come up and show up some more experiments. Oh, yeah. So in mid-June, uh, the version 0 0.3 of iframe is due. Who has played with the first version of the WebVR APIs? OK, a few people in the room. So for the 0 0.3, we're going to be compatible with the new spec. And uh, there is interesting use cases that the new API enables. Oh, that's OK. <laughs> That comes later. So for the 0 0.3 version, we'll have a visual editor. Uh, so still, you have a declarative API. You have a programmatic uh, J uh, JavaScript API. But now you can visually manipulate also a scene. So for, for example, I open this scene. You can have a bookmark with this special uh, uh, pointer to the, to the editor. And a new button appears on the, on the page. You can open the editor and you load any scene that is in, in the wild. You can, you can open any scene, you can see the scene graph here, and you can manipulate it in individual elements, you can add a new object, uh, you can uh, put the, uh, change the position of the object, you can change the intensity of the light, in this case it's a light, uh, you can change the color of the light, um, you can add the new geometry, um, you can add a new camera, and then you can go back and see how everything looks like. So it's a really very easy, interactive, visual way to, to edit a, an, an A-frame scene. This is going to be part of the 0 0.3 release. Uh, as I was telling, like the new uh, spec, spec of the WebVR API is enabled interesting scenarios. Like, um, for instance, uh, this is not part of the new spec, but it's part of the, of the, of the new version of A-frame as well. Uh, A-frame uh, 0.3 is going to be embeddable. So you will be able. Uh, I go. Oh, where is the? Okay. No, I want to go to the to the browser. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is an example on how. Um, so right now, all these scenes and experiences you see made with a frame are full screen experiences. So um, it's a bit onerous that. Uh, the web developers are going to redi completely redesign all their websites to work on VR. But on 0 0.3, everything will be embeddable. So this is an example of how VR can, can enhance, an existing, enhance existing web content uh, um, when it makes sense. So this is the, the wiki page, Wikipedia page of the tallest standing structure in the world. And as you are used to, uh, you can just read the text, see the images, 
and consume the content as, as you, you've been doing. But here, uh, we have a small uh, Easter egg. So there's like an embedded A-frame scene, right? And you can actually preview it here. You can, you can play with it. And if you have a headset connected, you just click on the button. You go to the VR mode, and I have to. And this is what you would see. So you are standing in just in front of the building, and you can, you can get the sense of the scale of this huge construction. So this is one of the, one of the properties of VR. It's, it's, a much more, uh, it's a much better medium to, to, to convey the sense of the scale. Um, room scale. So um, you know, the new in, in the new spec, uh, we have, uh, so the, game, the new gamepad spec is compatible with the hand track controllers. And you also have uh, the, concept so the concept of um, uh, scene parameters that allows you to, to create like room scale experiences using the HTC Vive. And this is an example. So, so you will have this example as part of the 0.3. And on two lines of markup, you will be able to have two hands that you can use in, in any scene. This is, this is a, a nice discovery. So till now, um, the WebVR API forced uh, mirroring displays to whatever you were seeing on the headset, it was mirrored on the main display. But it, with the new spec, this is no longer the case. So you, you, cannot, you actually have two displays that you can use the way you want. You can display something in the headset and display uh, whatever you want on the, on the main display. In this scenario, uh, you have Kevin is using the, uh, the mouse and the keyboard to actually throw balls to me. And I'm there trying to dodge them and, and block them. So it's just a single computer, one person playing with the main display and mouse and keyboard, and the other person with, with the headset and the controllers. So you can have this, this kind of like collaborative, asymmetric kind of gameplay. This is how we argue over code reviews. We just play this game, whoever wins. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right now you have two displays. You have, for me it blows my mind, it's multi-display web applications. Oh. <laughs> oh, link troublesome. So this is also a property of the new spec. So before, um, each time that you traverse sites, if you're in VR mode, you get dropped out of it, okay? And you have to re-engage by, uh, by clicking an L on the button. You need a user action to re-engage the, the VR mode. So this is no longer the case. So you can actually traverse from site to site to site within VR, which is pretty cool. So we seamlessly copied, uh, if you play the, the lab from Steam, so each globe represents a, a link, and you just grab that ball, uh, put the head inside, and you just traverse to, to another website. And with WebVR, there's so much space for possibility for exploration. This is just one possible kind of pattern for link traversal. But there's so much there's so much to discover, and I mean we need the millions of web developers out there to prototype and have open experimentation to see what works and what doesn't. And there's lots and lots of low hanging fruit to work on. Yeah. Yep. So our A-frame side, our Slack channel, and our Twitter handle. Yep. 